Hi guys, this is Amit Tower from Network Assam Technical Team, and today's topic is OSI model. So OSI stands for Open System Interconnection, and let's start with OSI. So guys, we are going to be start one OSI model video series, and this series is divided into ten parts. So part one covers OSI model review. So in the first part, we will discuss about OSI, how many layers are there, what are the roles of the each and every layer. So we'll discuss about that one. So part two is about data flow. So data flow means let's consider if there will be two PCs and if there's a one PC and that PC is communicating with any of the HTTPSB server. So how the communication will happen between those that client and the server and we'll discuss about the data flow through the OSI on the client side as well, and then on the server side as well. So that is all about data flow. Part three is about lab of OSI. So that same concept between client and server, once the communication will happen for the HTTP service, or maybe for HTTP, so that time we will capture their packets. So that is all about packet captures, and then we will discuss about OSI at packet level. Part four is about TCP IP stack model versus OSI model. So TCP IP stack model and we'll do with, uh, we will compare with OSI. So that is a comparison between both the models. Then part five cover TCP protocol part A. So further guys, what we have done, we have divided TCP protocol. So into four to five parts, as you know, TCP is a very vast uh, protocol, a lot of things are there. So we have divided TCP into five parts there. So that part A, B, C, D, and E here. So in the part five, fifth and sixth, seventh and eighth, eighth and ninth, in OSI series, we'll discuss about TCP protocol. And part 10 is about TCP versus UDP protocol. So guys, this is the, these are the videos, uh, video series which we will upload on the video soon. So one by one. So today, this is the part one and let's start that is OSI model review. So now what are the agendas for the for today? So today's agendas are guys, OSI model history. So first we'll discuss about OSI model history when it's came and when it started and how this idea came. Then OSI model review, we will review the OSI model, how many, uh, uh, how many uh, layers are there in the OSI model and what are the roles of each and every layers that we will discuss in the section. Then about encapsulation, de-encapsulation and then data formats. So let's start case. So the first is OSI model history. So what does it mean? So OSI means open system interconnection and uh, there is an guys international standard organization like that is ISO. So, so which established one committee in 1977 to develop an architecture for the computer communication. Before 1977, there was a lot of issues. The, the companies they were facing a lot of issues that time between for the communication of the computers. So after that, in 1977, ISO they established one committee and they asked them to develop one architectures for the computer communication and that was like kind of or standard they were just trying to build one standard for the computer organization computer communications there for all the vendors so then that committee they established the committee and then this result then the what was the result of their efforts the after the result for their efforts was open system interconnection so then they came with the one reference model and that known as i say osi model guys. So this is one of the computer, one of the architecture, standard architecture for the computer communications there. Then in 1944, 84, OSI reference model was approved and almost it took uh, six to seven years for them to, for the OSI model to develop the OSI model. And finally it got approved in 1984 as a international standard for the communication architectures between any computer devices. It's for the communications between any computer devices. So this is all about OSI model. So this is kind of one standard architectures which help 
or which or like some, mostly all the vendors like HP and about Dell, who's the like the PC devil, uh, vendors case, they use OSI model to for the communication between the device system. So this is all about history. So in 1984, so ISO standard ISO has approved OSI model as a international standard for computer communication there. So OSI model review. So OSI model layer has been divided into seven layers. So these are the seven layers here. So L1, this is L1 layer. This its name is physical layer here. Then L2, all about the data link. L3, about network. L4, transport layer. L5, session layer. L6, presentation. L7, all about application layers. So L1 to L4 divided into uh, the uh, lower layers as well, because OSI model is divided into two parts, lower layer and then upper layer. The lower layer is also known as hardware-based layers, and the upper layers are also known as software-based layers there. Because L6 or layer 7, 6, and 5th always works on software. So that these three layers is also known as software-based layers. And L1, 2, 3, and 4 also known as hardware-based layers. Okay, so let's start. So first layer. The first layer is, so actually the first layer is about L1, that is about physical layer. But in this uh, video, we'll discuss about OSI from L7 here. So the first layer is about application layer. What's the reason? Because let's consider this is one PC and this is one server. And you just wanna download anything uh, from the server or maybe we need any communication between these this client and the server. So once you will send any request, any HTTPS request, let's consider you're using application HTTPS. So if you're using this application or okay, this protocol to start the communication with, with the servers, so it's always start from L7 first here. So L7 to L6, then five, then four, then three, then two, and then one, then one here. So this is the reason I'm going to be started from application. So what does it mean, application? What is actually application layer is? So application layer is, guys, it's in a kind of, you can say, abstraction layer. That abstraction layer that specifies the shared communication protocols and interface methods used by host in a communication server here. Okay, let's consider this is one of the server and this is the one of the PC. This is one of this server we're hosting here HTTP servers. So now you have to communicate with the server, but the question is which protocol will you use it over here or which application you're gonna be use it. So then we need kind of like kind of interface which and with that help uh, with the help of that interface so you can communicate with the server so we use here different different protocols like http <clears throat> https telnet ftp so these kind of protocol we use to communicate with the servers and these protocols are the part of the application layer here so application layer as you can say it's kind of ui user interface you can say which with the help of that UI, we will interact with the application. So let's consider I have, this is my PC and we have obviously desktop over, this is my desktop, over, I'm using Windows 10 here. So this is my desktop. And on that top of that, there is I'm using different, different applications. Like I'm using Google Chrome, I'm using Firefox, I'm using Putty to connect with the uh, destination servers. And then I'm using FTP, I'm using different, different protocols over here. So for that, so this is what, this is kind of your application layer here. So you can see the definition as well. It's, so it provides the network service to application process, such as electronic mail is about emails, then file transfer. We use different, different protocol for that. FTP file transfer protocol is one of them. Then FTP is also there, secure file transfer protocol. So there are the different, different protocols which we use to transfer the files and then terminal emulation here. So there are a lot of different, different protocols over here. 
that provide user authentication also. If you have to authenticate the user, then without GUI or without application layer, you can't or user can't authenticate himself with the servers. So without application, you can't authenticate yourself. So you can say application layers provide user authentication also. Next set, it give the end user application access to the network resources. So same thing, what I have mentioned and what are the protocols we use for application layer? So I want application layer that HTTP, HTTPS, FTP. So these are the layers. These are the protocols which we use at application layer. So this is all about application layer. In short, this is kind of interface between client and server. Let's move to the next application, next layer. Next layer is all about presentation layer. So what is presentation layer? So presentation layer, it will ensure that the data is readable by the receiving system. The data is readable by the receiving system. So let's consider this is one PC. This is one server and there is a communication. So it's connected like this. So if you have to, let's consider, I just, you wanna access this particular server here. So you are, I'm gonna be use protocol here, SCTPS, which is all about what this is all about your SCTPS. This is all about application layer. But after that, what kind of data you need, what you wanna, maybe you're just transferring the data from this client to the this server, or maybe you're downloading any kind of data from server to the clients over here. So that data should be, in the readable format on the both the sides. So who will take care of that thing? Only presentation layer. Means, for example, this is one PC, this is one server. And from server, you have to download any file. Just consider you just downloaded one picture from there, or maybe you this is one pic you have downloaded, or maybe you have downloaded one movie from there. Okay, and let's consider you have downloaded this movie on this one, but you don't have any video player. Let's consider you don't, uh, we need one video player for that. Maybe Amex player, maybe you're using VLC over there, or maybe any Windows player you're using. Let's consider out of these players, you don't have any kind of application on your PC. So obviously, whatever the movie you have downloaded or songs you have downloaded, that is in MP, MP4 format or whatever the formats there, that is you won't be able to play on your system there. Whatever the pictures you have downloaded from here, let's consider this picture, this is in the JPG format over here. And then once you will download it, you have another format. So this compatibility between the server and the between the clients here. So presentation layer will help us to, and it will ensure that data will be readable by the receiving system here. It will take care about format of your data, structure of your data, and it will negotiate data transfer syntax for the application layers here. So means presentation layer will present the receive, it will present or it will represent the received data as per your format here. <clears throat> let's consider uh, as I'm A, this is my system A and this is system B. I have one video and this video, and I'm using here Amex player, okay? This guy is using VLC player. This guy doesn't have Amex and I doesn't, and in this, I don't have any kind of VLC. So this is the video. So on your PC, you can run, or you can play this video with the help of Amex player. And on the another side, this guy also play the same video with VLC player here. So that is all about what? This is all because of presentation layer. The structure will be different. The same video which you're using on your PC, you can play that same video on your mobile phone as well. You can play on your desktop as well. Sorry, you can on the iPad as well. You can play the same video on your smart TV as well. So that is what? That is same video you can play on the different, different devices and presentation layer will present or represent the same data as for that particular device there. So this is all about structure and then format of the data. So presentation layer will take care about all this thing. So during the data communication, during the uh, communication, 
between the client and the server or between the two PCs. So presentation layer will take care about at your encryption as well. It will take care about encryption as well. So what en encryption does mean? What is the meaning of encryption here? What does it mean? So see, presentation layer will help us in encryption and decryption also. What does it mean? So see, let's consider between the client and the between server, we just want to exchange any kind of data. We have want to exchange any kind of data. So when, if you want to exchange any data, so that data, if you don't want to share in the clear text, means what is a clear text? Clear text means, let's consider, this is one of my credit card information and this credit card information means, so, so let's consider, so one second, no. So this is some, I have some credit card information. The credit card information, uh, let's consider this is a uh, card number. So this is about one, two, three, four, five, six. And then it's CVV number, it's about five, six, three here. And it's pin code is about five, six, nine, eight. Here. So this is all about credit card information. And this information is the what? This is in the clear text here. This information in the which format? This is in the clear text. So this clear text information is guys, this is not secure. Because when you will exchange your data over the internet, so in the clear text format guys, that is not the, in the secure concept. So we need security for that. So for that thing, we have to create a, or we have to change this clear text into the cipher text. So as for the cipher text, so, what will be here? The card number. Now the card number will be changed. So this will be in the encrypted format. So this is guys kind of like your, this is cipher text. You can say this is encrypted data here. This is what encrypted data. And which protocol will we will use? We will use here AES. We can use here dash or three dash also. So these are the algorithm which we use to encrypt the data from clear text to the, the cipher text here. So this is encrypted data, now not able to read it. So this is what? This is in the readable format. So this data is what? Readable format here, but this is not. Okay, this is not. The reason is because this is encrypted data. So now this is what? This is secure. So presentation layer will help us to encrypt the data here. So it will provide encryption and on the another end, so this is from the client side. So then on the receiver side, this is from the sender side. So on the receiver side, then presentation layer will help to decrypt the data. So this is, it's possible all because of the presentation layer. So next is, Session layer, what does it mean? Session layer plays a very important role, means. So let's consider, we am using, uh, this is my laptop. And this laptop, uh, this is my Google Chrome. This for example, this is my Google, this is my browser. And it's all about Google Chrome here. So in the Google Chrome right now, I have opened so many different, different tabs. Tab A, then tab B, then tab C over here, then tab D. So I'm using different, different tabs over here. And in the different, different tabs, I'm using different, different sites. Let's consider, and this one I'm using here, uh, WhatsApp. This is consider, I'm using here, WhatsApp application. So this is all about, I'm using here, WhatsApp. Next is, I'm using here, uh, LinkedIn. So this is next is I'm using Facebook. And next is we are I'm using here networkers home site here. And then next is all about Cisco site here, Cisco.com. So the thing is, as a user, because as a user, you are using the different different sites at the same time. So let's consider you're sending one message to your friend from WhatsApp.
So obviously, if you're sending any message, hi, how are you? Or are you there and all? So if you're sending any message to your friend from WhatsApp, so obviously, guys, we are expecting the reply on the WhatsApp itself here. Okay, obviously, it's not possible you're sending the hi from WhatsApp and then you're waiting for the reply on the LinkedIn or you will receive its reply. This is about request. This is hi. And after that, you will receive its reply on the Facebook. That is not possible. You are just looking for uh, uh, any training information from Networkers Home. So obviously, that in, for that information, you have to go to the Networkers Home site. Set. At the same time, let's consider that you are uh, you have open one more site of any another training company. Let's consider this as INE. So you are looking for now. If you are looking for networkers home information and if you need any information from networkers home site, so that is obviously possible on the networkers home site itself, not on INE. And INE information will be possible only. You will get you will get it on INE portal here, not on networkers home. And if you will try to contact networkers home a sales team, so that reply you will receive on your networkers home site, obviously not on this one. So obviously as a user one question will be uh, then in my mind i have opened so many tabs at the same time and i'm uh, right now i'm chatting with one of my friend at uh, on whatsapp then on with my link or uh, with one of my, another friend on the linkedin then with one friend on the facebook so why these messages are not not uh, not getting collapsed and uh, why it's not happening i'm sending hi to on the whatsapp and i'm i'll get the reply on the linkedin so this is all because of session layer here because session layer will keep your sessions separate over here even within whatsapp itself if i'm talking about within whatsapp so within whatsapp guys maybe you are chatting you're doing the chat with your more than one friends there. So why their chats are not getting uh, exchanged? So what's the reason for that? How that chat, all those chats are like known the, the separate concept, how in the separate windows. So that is all because of session layers here. So session layer will help us to keep all the, these sessions separately. It will establish the uh, sessions. So you can see here, enter host communication, so it will establish the session, it will manage the session, and it will terminate the session between the applications. So, so session layer will help us. One more example of the session layer. Let's consider it's happened with us, and uh, let's consider you are doing one online. Uh, you are doing online banking here. Okay, this is uh, one of the ICC bank here. Okay, and you just logged in because you have to transfer some money like online. So once we log in into ICIC online banking, online banking, what happened? Let's consider now you have transferred the funds, and after that you forget to uh, forget to log out from that site here. So what happened after maybe just for example after thirty seconds or maybe after those sixty seconds, if your session will be idle, means there will be no movement on that site, so automatically you will be log out from there. <clears throat> then automatically you will be log out from there. So what is that concept? That is all about the session, means session expired automatically. Because these are the very secure sites. It's very crucial information on the banking there. So ICSA Bank has already set all these things at their session layer, okay, if any user will be idle for the 60 seconds, okay? So that will be, ex the session will be expired automatically from there okay mm -hmm. so this kind of session let's consider facebook even i don't know even i don't remember last time when i have logged in into my facebook account here perhaps daily and in my linkedin account because daily i'm using it so the session is not getting expired so that is also how it's happening that is all because of session layer here so without session layer we can't expect that kind of stuff here so this is the session layer which will establish, which will manage, and which will terminate the session between the application. It's allow application to maintain ongoing session also. So this is all about session layer, which will maintain, terminate, and establish your sessions. 
So first of all, application layer, it's all about network process to applications like HTTP, HTTP, so telnet, whatever you're using, or maybe FTP, then it will present the data as per the format of your device, and then it will keep the session at, it will first establish the session, then it will manage it, and then it will terminate it. So this is all about upper layer. So the working of the, these three layers case, this is all about software based. As a network engineers, we don't have to worry about the, these three layers because this is all about software based here. And these three layers is also known as upper layer. As per network engineers, we have to worry about the, these four layers. So now let's discuss about the lower layer. So the next layer is transport. So transport is the transport layer. So as per name, we can say transport. So transport means what is the meaning of transportation? So it will carry your data from one device to another device. So this layer play a very important role. So on this layer, let's discuss about this. So this is kind of end-to-end -end connection between devices to devices. It handles transportation issues between the host. It will ensure transport reliability. It establish and maintain and terminate the virtual circuits. It provides reliability through fault detection and recovery information flow control. So what does it mean, guys? <laughs> so as per name, you can see transport. So it will handle transportation issues. Too. So let's consider you have, we have two devices or, or we have server and clients and we have to transfer the data, maybe from client to server or maybe server to client, any of the, these cases. So we need some transportation protocols over there. So on transport layer, mostly and most commonly, we use two protocol for the transportation. One is TCP and second is UDP. TCP and UDP. So this is all about end-to-end -end connection. TCP protocol is all about your the most reliable protocol as compared to UDP. And if you will use TCP protocol, so obviously your guaranteed delivery will be there, kind of acknowledgement will be there. So that means you can say between TCP and UDP, TCP is more reliable protocol as per transportation concept there. But yes, TCP is a little bit slow as compared to UDP. If you don't need, any kind of acknowledgement of data receiving on the another side, on the destination side. So then you can use UDP over here. UDP is more faster as compared to TCP. So TCP protocol number seven and UDP protocol number, sorry, this is six and UDP protocol number 17 here. So TCP and UDP is kind of gaze, you can say, what is it? So you can say this is kind of container, two different, different containers here, okay? Just for example, this is TCP and this is all about UDP here, which contains different, different services into that, like telnet, SSH, SCTP, SCTPS. So this is all about the their services. So TCP protocol number six, and UDP protocol number 17. Telnet port number 23, SSS 22, SCTP 80, SCTPS about 443 here. Same UDP is all about DNS, port number 53, then about DHCP, port number about 67 and 68. So different, different kind of what? Services. So these are the kind of containers, okay? So the, for example, transportation system. I have to travel Bangalore to Delhi or Delhi to Bangalore. So I have options. I can go via air or I can go via train here. So then I have different, different options into that. I can go via Air India. I can go here via uh, different, different one. Let's consider go air. Okay. So different, different airlines. So I have different, different options over. I can go with Indigo. 
so different different systems so then train so there is a different different a b and c trains out there so that is what kind of transportation system over here okay so this is all about what this is all about end to end connection here so this is all about transport layers here. so tcp and udp these are the two main protocols which we use for the transportation over here next is network layer so network layer is all about data delivery so my name is amit tower okay and amit tower is what amit tower is my ident identity so now and i have to transfer oh, let's consider um and right now i'm in bangalore and i have to send some power one parcel in delhi so first of all if you have to send any parcel to the delhi so obviously we need addresses over there we need what address without address you can't send any kind of parcels here so same in networking we need uh, and in address what we need one we need name of the receiver and then we need its address there the permanent address we need so same here now in networking there is two kind of addresses one is ip addresses this is all about logical addresses and second is mac addresses which is all about permanent addresses so network layer it's all about data delivery and it's root data packets select the best part to deliver the data provide logical addressing means it's all about ip addresses over here okay and then path selection here so mostly on network layers case at network layer we use two kind of protocols one is routed protocol and second is routing protocol then routing protocols routed protocols there we have two options one we have ipv4 there are two options for that one is ipv4 and second is ipv6 and second in the routing protocols there are options like rip like ospf and then ospf and then ea grp so these are the routing protocol and these are the routed protocols so routed protocols means this is kind of addresses this and what kind of addresses this is kind of logical one and routed means say if you have to transfer any data between any two devices so first of all we need addresses over here so that address is let's consider here i'm using 10.1 and i'm using here 15.1 here so between these two devices so this is what kind of your addresses here so ipv4 is all about 32 bits and ipv6 is all about 128 these are this is the size of their addresses so without these routed protocols or without this ipv4 and ipv6 obviously we can't assign any ip and once we will assign the ip that's fine so this is what you have assigned the ip that's fine but after that now i'm in bangalore my name is amit okay one of my friend his name is nathan and let's consider he is in delhi okay i have to send some data that's fine amit is fine and nathan is fine we amit and nathan is what this is kind of identity here so same 10.1 and 50.1 is what that is kind of identity so if we have to transfer the data after that we need transport system into that and this transport system will use transportation protocol that is tcp and udp here so the transport system is all about router in bit with that because router is in a device which will deals with different different networks not the switches so router which will deals with the different different networks here so on this side we have one network 10 this is one network we have 15 or 20 and in between so many networks out there so now you have to transfer your data to the next router and the next router will find out the best path and after that it will decide it maybe from this router there is a more than one paths out there okay so for example this is here we have one source we have destination router and these are the different different path over here 
source this is source now this is about source here and this is about destination this is out of one path a this is you can say this is path a here path b and then path c here so first of all we need routed protocols routed protocols means ip addresses consider here 11.1 next is 15.1 and it's about 20.1 here so then this is about 60.1 here that's a destination so same on the, these routers also different different ips that ip addresses uh assigned ip address has been assigned 15.2 and it's about then 20.2 here so different different routers and then there is a different different ip this is one network over here then when to network over here so let's consider that this is the source we are using routed protocol ipv4 here which routing product routed protocol i'm using we are using here routed protocol which routed protocol we are using i'm using here ipv4 here ip for your ipv4 you are using that's fine but which routing protocol are you using so maybe just for example, maybe we are using here EHRP. We are using here OSPF, and maybe we are using REP here. So these are the different different routing protocols we are using for the different different paths. So this router now here we have to mention the destination IP is by sixty dot one. So then this router will decide how many paths do we have. We have three paths. So now this now router will decide which path is the best path here out of these three so then this router will compare the properties their metric values and their about 80 values kind of stuff of these protocols and after that router will find out which is the best path over here so let's consider somehow this router just go to you know this ehrp this is the best path here just for example after that further Data will reach to the, this router and this, for example, can see that from this router again, we have two paths, path A and path B. So again, router will decide it, which path is the best path behalf of routing protocols. And then let's consider it will choose this is the best path. So this is the now first, this router to this router, then this router and this, this router, and finally reach to the destination. So first of all, we need routed protocols. And after that, we need routing pro router needs routing protocol to decide whether which path is the best path or not here. So all this kind of operation and process will happen here. That will happen at the network layer. So router is router is the device which we use at network layers. So you can see routes the data packet. It will route the packet means it will uh, from it will check the destination IP and then it will uh, forward the packet to the next device or the next destination. Select the best path to deliver the data. Be that depends on the routing protocol. Which routing protocol are you using? And provide the logical addressing and then path selection. Here. So you can see here it provides the network wide addressing and a mechanism to move the packet between the known networks here. So when the pack when your packets or data will move between the networks that concept is known as routing over here that concept is known as routing over here so this is the brief idea about the network protocols network layer let's move to the next protocol data link so data link so data link is all about it's access to the media it defines how data is formatted for the transmission and how access to the network is control and provide error detection so this is kind of back addresses now it will use what this is for example just uh to make you understand i'm using this term here network layer is can kind of you can say van and this is kind of your lan just to make you understand this just make you uh understand the difference between network and the data link layer so this is kind of one and this is kind of lan here so at data link layer we use mac addresses the mac address is all about fixed addresses and then permanent addresses here so network layer is all about logical addresses 
the temporary addresses and data link is provides all about the permanent addresses here. So on data link layer guys, we use the devices like switch, switch always we use on the data link layers. Here. So the link, data link layer is further divided into two parts. There's a two sub layers. One is Mac layer and an LLC layer. So Mac layer is about media access control, give the data to the NIC, network interface card and control the access to the media through CSDM CD and then about token passing here. So it will just will remove the kind of loops over here. And then LLC, logical link layer. So it will manage the data link interface, okay? And it can detect some transmission error using a cyclic redundancy check, CRC. If the packet is bad, then LLC will request the sender to resend the particular packet. So data link layer is further divided into two sub layers, that is Mac and then LLC layer over here. The last, but the first layer is physical layer. So physical layer is all about binary transmission. So this is all about the physical connection set. So if two devices, let's consider these are the two devices connected here. So this is about what? When it's connected, now this is connected here, two devices. So this layer is, this one is known as about physical layer. And here the data will be transferred in the modes of, in the, so bits, the binary number here. So this is all about physical. So I can say I can touch the physical layers, but the data, network, transport, session, presentation, application, all are the what? Just kind of, you can say imagination and kind of virtual layers there. But the physical layers we can touch. So define the electrical, mechanical, procedural, and functional specification for activating, maintaining, and deactivating the physical links. So it's all about physical layer. Physical connection is all about physical. When the data will be transferred, so that is all about physical layer. So determine the specific specification for all the physical components like cabling. With cabling, uh, what uh, cables are you using? Are you using their fast Ethernet, Giga Ethernet, and uh, fiber optics? What kind of cables are you using? So it's about that one. Interconnect method what is all about topology devices. It's about topology. So are you using bus topology, ring topology? What kind of topology are you using? So it depends on that. What kind of devices are you using? Are you using the outer switches? So it's all about that. Data encod encoding, bits to wave, electrical properties. And for example, Ethernet, IEEE A0.3 is example of the physical layer. Token ring is about 8.0.5 and wireless is about 8.0.2.11p here. So these days we use wireless concept as well. Let's consider this is one of the server and this is one of your PC and you have to connect yourself with this one. So there's a three options, two options. You can connect with a wired or you can connect with wireless signals there. Okay, so that is also the part of what physical layer here. So this is all about all the seven layers. Now, next question is, how does it all works together? So you can see each layer contain a different, different protocol data unit. Means once your data, first of all, host A and host B. So we have to transfer the data between both the host. So always, if this is the sender and this is the receiver, so always it starts from application layer to physical layer. And after that, it will goes back on the another end. It will be physical to application. Means, consider you have ordered one mobile phone uh, from Amazon, okay? So this is one of the vendor. This is Amazon here, okay? And this is you. You are the receiver now. You have ordered or you have placed one order for mobile phone and it says, so first of all, this is your mobile phone. So what the Amazon will do, the Amazon will do the different, different kind of packing on that. This is the first layer of packing, then about second layer, then about the third layer, then about the fourth layer. So different, different what? Different, different packing. And after that, they will deliver the data to the another side, okay? So when Amazon will perform this kind of packing, that concept is known as an 
encapsulation here. That concept itself is known as encapsulation. And after that, it will transmit or this parcel will be transmitted to the view and who will take care, who will uh, take this uh, packet from Amazon to the, uh, to the U, then there will be some delivery pause. There will be delivery pause that time here. So they will deliver the packet. So this is what, who is these guys? These guys are TCP and IP here. Now let's consider the, this is TCP and UDP. They are using the here's uh, transfer protocol. This is the delivery boy is not aware about what is exactly of your address. What is about it? Let's consider your address is sector seven. This is about sector seven HSR Bangalore. Okay. So this is your address, but this guy is not aware about that. This is your address. And this is mentioned where this is your packet. And this address is mentioned on top of your this one here. So now this is mentioned here. Okay. So now what this guy will do, this guy is aware about destination. This guy is having your packet as well. So this guy is known as now TCP and IP pro TCP and UDP protocols are not IP. This is about TCP and UDP protocol here. It's about TCP and UDP. So TCP and UDP is fine. Protocol we have. This is now we have addresses and everything we have. What is your name? Let's consider your name is his name is Nathan Farmer. Okay. So this is all about IP address. This is kind of what? This is kind of IP address here now. I'll, this is all about MAC addresses. So this is about L2 layer. And this is all about L3 layer. So this is TCP and UDP. It's all about L4 layer. It's about L4. After that, now this guy will use some bike and all. This is guy is this guy is having one bike. So this is bike will act as a what? Your L1 layer. That is about physical transfer. Now this guy is having one bike. So that bike will act as a what? That will act as a L1 layer. Okay. Then this guy will use Google Map to find your address. This is about what? Google Map here. So this Google Map will find out the best path to best and then shortest path. Shortest path here. Okay. So this is what? It's all about routing protocol. This concept is all about what? It's all about routing protocol. Protocol. This one. So now, <clears throat> this delivery boy, this TCP protocol, will find out what is the destination. Nitin Verma addresses this one, then will use his bike, and then, or you can say L1 layer, and then use this routing protocol to find out the best path and finally will deliver this data to the user here. So once we will receive this data, let's consider you got this data. And after that guys, you have to do what you have to do the, you have to open your packets. So then you will open this packet over here. So first of all, you will remove this one here. You will what? You will remove your first layer. This is from one over here. Encapsulation. Then after that, this one, after that, this one. So one by one, you will remove all the layers of the packing over here, right? And finally, you will receive what? You will receive your data. You will receive your mobile phone. So when you will receive the, your mobile phone, this is what? This is all about your data encapsulation. So when you will remove your, or when you will unpack your parcel, that process is known as de encapsulation. Now what? De encapsulation. So same concept over here. How does it work? Each layer contains in a protocol data unit, PDU. On application layer, once this is sender and this is receiver, will send the traffic here. So now it will what? It's sending the traffic here. So this is that application layer. So an application presentation session, the same data will act as a data only. But once it will 
these to the transport layer, that transport layer will treat this data as a segment. Network layer will treat it as a packets, data link will treat it as a frames, and physical layer will treat it as a bit layer. So this is about protocol data unit here. So PDU are used for the peer-to-peer -peer contact between the corresponding layers, between the corresponding layers there. Data is handled by the top three layers, then segmented by the transport layer here about the segmentation we will discuss in the upcoming videos. The network layer plays it into the packets and then data line frame the packet for the transmission. Physical layer convert to the bit and send it to over the media and then receiving computer receive the process using the information contained in the PDU. So how this is all about sender side and this is all about receiving side. So this is all like how it all works here. And on different, different layers, we call the same data with the different, different name. Like on the first three layer about application presentation session is all about data. Then at transport, it's uh, known as a segment, network as a packet, data link as a frame, and physical as about pets here. So what's the encapsulation? So you can see just now we have mentioned sender. This is the user data. Then first of all, L7 layer. L7 header. Let's consider here I'm using HTTPS protocol. So this is all about HTTPS header. Then L6 header, L5 header, then four header, three header, and two header. And finally, this is my data over here. This is L uh, data link. Then it will send it to the physical and physical will convert this data into the bits. So this is encapsulation, adding the headers into the data. And then next is, the encapsulation. The encapsulation is all about then further from bottom to up from L1 to L7 layer will re it will remove the header one by one. And then finally, first we'll remove L2, then L3, then L4, then L5, then six, and then seven. And finally, receiver will receive its data. So this is all about the encapsulation process. So about the encapsulation and de-encapsulation process, we will discuss in the upcoming session in depth. So that is about data flow here. So what is the data format here? So you can see all about data format, application data here. So this is all about message, which is on the, your application layer. And further now, this application uh, data will come on your transport layer. So this is about application, then presentation and then session. And once it will reach to the transport layer, that data will be divided. If, if you want to send this huge data over here, so that data is not going to be sent in a single packet that will be further divided into different, different packet, because what is your MTU size? That is 1500 bytes. Here. So data will be divided as per the MTU. So this is further the data is divided into small, small chunks over small, small packets. So then transport layer add, uh, layer will add its TCP header in front of each and every data. Then it will forward the, the same, all the three by all the three segments into the network layer. The network layer will add its IP header, then data link will add its ethernet header. Here. So Transport layer will divide this data into small, small segments. So that concept is about segmentation. And at transport layer, the data is also known as segments. So this is all about the data formats. So guess this was the brief idea about OSI. And if you have to follow, so these are the, some standard documents for the OSI model, like the OSI model was defined in ISO IEC 7498, which consists of the following parts. So these are the basic model consists about in 7498.1, then two, and three, and then four. So first one covers is about basic model. The second about security architecture. Third is naming and addressing. And fourth is management network. So you can follow or you, there's these standard organization of OSI model. So this is guys, the brief idea of OSI. So, uh, and the next, this was a part one. So after that, soon you will get the part two. And in the part two, we will discuss about the data flow. That is about encapsulation and de-encapsulation in depth. And that's it. So thank you guys for watching the videos.